Welcome to Business Leadership Podcast. In this podcast, I interview successful business leaders and industry experts to help you grow your business. In this episode, my guest is a founder of Pajama Program. She left her uh, job as a successful TV marketing executive, picked up a pair of pajamas, and built a nationally known nonprofit organization called Pajama Program. She's also author of a new book, Purpose, Passion, and Pajamas. Um, her work and uh, story has been featured on uh, Oprah show, uh, the Today Show, uh, the Forbes, CNN, Fox, and Wall Street Journal, and many other media channels. Now we had a discussion around the various different topics around the building nonprofit organization, building a business, or or just a general leadership. Um, she t- uh, walks us through, you know, what kind of obstacles she had to face, and you know, some some of those challenges she had to deal with in order to build this nonprofit organization. She also talks about uh, you know some of the lessons learned in terms of leadership and managing people and, and managing a nonprofit organization uh, when you're building a business. And some of those lessons could be easily translated that into business environment. So business leaders, if you if you fall dealing with some of those challenges, you know, there's a lot to learn from her experience over the last 20, 25 years that you know those lessons that she, she learned uh, while building a nonprofit uh, that could be also applied to the business business as well. So hope you enjoyed my discussion with her. I learned a lot from her and, and especially her passion um, for nonprofit organization and, and helping out kids with the pajamas and building this organization. So I hope uh, you also learned from our discussion as well. If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Until next time, please welcome my guest, Genuine Paturo. Hi guys, welcome to Business Leadership Podcast. Today my guest is Genuine Paturo. Uh, Genuine, you know, I, I just gone through your book. There's a lot of interesting stories in your book. And I'm looking forward to learning from you, looking forward to our discussion. Thank you so much for time today. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. So so walk us through, you know, uh, your book, uh, you know, Purpose, Passion and Pajamas, you know, um, very interesting book, a lot of good stories, you know, your your personal stories a lot. So if you walk our audience to a little bit of a you know, background story in a pajamas, so so how, how did that come around and, and uh, what made you choose this as pajamas instead of anything else? Well, good question. <laughs> it's strange, right? Pajamas. But yeah. um, there is a story. I was climbing the corporate ladder here in New York City because I always wanted to do that. I thought that would be an exciting, fulfilling, and lucrative career. Mm-hmm. And I really didn't see the traditional Italian upbringing that I was geared toward as what I was looking forward to. I didn't want to get married young and have children. I wanted to maybe decide later if that's what I wanted. So I knew I wanted to be in the corporate world first. So I was doing that and I was doing well. And 12 years in of a crazy, you can imagine, workaholic life, like so many Mm -hmm. of us here, I heard a voice in me from, from inside. And I heard it ask me, if this is the next 30 years of your life, is this enough? And it stopped me cold. And I realized I was working so hard and I was climbing so fast, but it left me with with nothing inside. And I and I realized this in in a matter of seconds and minutes when I heard this voice. And I thought, I'm making money and I'm making money for other people. And I'm running fast. And if I stay this way, I'm gonna still be alone when I'm 50, 60, 80, and I'll be exhausted and I'll have left nothing you know, nothing mm-hmm. to the world except another busy, you know, workaholic. And I realized that I was raised with the values of family and, and, and children. And although I didn't think that I was then going to get married and have children, I was a little older for that. I thought, how could I bring children into my life? And so I started reading in emergency shelters where the police and the social workers took children after they were hurt by those supposedly, you know, caring for them. And I read to them at night and it was the most quiet grounding time I'd had, you know, that I could ever remember. They were so quiet because they'd been traumatized. They they were afraid. They'd been literally ripped out of the place they lived, even though it was awful to, you know, to be in a safer place. And they didn't get it, of course, because they were children. So I would read to them week after week and it was very quiet and they just watched me and, you know, waited for the caregivers to come and take them wherever they were going to go or another room. And when they took them to go to sleep one night, I wanted to see, I wanted to see where they were going to sleep. And it broke my heart. I saw them 
staying in the clothes that they had been wearing. And some of them were not very clean or, you know, they had, they were ripped and torn and they were huddled together. In some cases, they were crying, some of them, and there were small, tiny beds and, you know, lights out, very nice caregivers that cared, Mm -hmm. but it was just, it was just so, so hard for me to, to stop thinking of my mom putting us to bed, which was so different, was loving and, you know, beautiful and of course we had pajamas to put on Mm. so they didn't have pajamas so I asked if I could bring pajamas next week and the caregiver said that would be so lovely and I did and after I read to them that time and I tried to give them all pajamas it was one little girl the other kids took the pajamas and they went to that room to change one little girl was so afraid of me and she just kept saying no no she didn't want them she didn't want them and I didn't understand why I, I kept trying gently to convince her to take the pajamas. And finally, after my last attempt, I didn't know what else to say to her. She just looked at me and she whispered, what are pajamas? What are these? Mm-hmm. And that's when everything just shut off in me, except I need to do this. I need to see how many children don't have pajamas and I need to find a way to get them all pajamas and let them feel love and comfort. You know, when they're, when they're going to bed at night, are they going to have bad dreams? And I I was just so confused. You know, I was just so naive. Mm -hmm. and It it broke my heart. And so that's what put me on that new path of just, uh, you know, became obsessed. And so the book is all the ups and downs of that moment on, you know, trying to keep it from my bosses. Um, I didn't know, what to do. I didn't want to work anymore. I just wanted to spend all my money buying pajamas. And I did. So over the 20 some years, pajama program, thank goodness is growing. I'm knocking wood, 42 chapters around the US. It was a labor of love, but that doesn't mean it was easy to Mm -hmm. to go off the corporate ladder. So this book, and when when I speak is all about the ups and downs and how that North Star guides you through the darkest of times. Yeah, it was such a noble cause. I think that's what people, you know, got behind this cause, right? So help you um, to 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 uh, build this organization, and any as any organization building uh, any, you know, whether it's nonprofit or for profit, is always challenge. You know, there's always ups and down when you're building the organization. And and I saw from from my, you know, that uh, on your website, you you you've been in an Oprah show, you've been in a Fox, uh, you know, Fox, you've been in a, all the different channels too, um, and all those people threw a lot of support behind uh, behind your behind your program and help you with with this. So how's been the journey so far? You know, it's been it. You mentioned it's been you know forty two chapters in all work all um, at, at nationwide, and and uh, how's this program doing at, at the moment? It's doing great. It's doing wonderful. I ran it for the first twenty years, so I could you know know that it was solid. And yeah. then I wanted to write my book and speak professionally. So we hired an executive director to take my place and she's wonderful. So she's teaching also some of the children who can handle it, how bedtime is supposed to be and how you calm down and you wind down because none of us are getting sleep, right? That's a big topic. Yeah, and It's important for these children who've been through such a difficult time to to feel loved and to learn a routine with the people who are now taking care of them. So she's she's taking on that piece, which is brilliant. And I wrote my book and I'm speaking. So it's going well, thank God. And I'm I'm inspiring and doing my best to support others who want to make a change. And it's not necessarily making a change to start a nonprofit. It's just making a change to fulfill your heart voice, yeah, what yeah. your purpose is. And and that's where I think a lot of young people or, or even older we struggle there, right? So yeah, corporate, you know, you you doing your you know uh, your work in on the one side, but you know, is that really your passion, right? And I think that's that's what's missing with a lot of people. And you were able to find your passion. So what would you recommend? You know, people who are you know definitely it's it's gonna take a lot of hard work to to work on your passion and and uh, uh, you know achieve this. What do you, what do you learn and what are your insights on that? You know what people working on? How, how do they go about finding the real passion? What they really want to do? Um, make a difference in the world instead of just working and and just just doing the jobs. You know, you know. The, I think that's what everybody gets stuck, right? Yes, yes. Well, first, I want to to tell everybody something that I learned. We all have a purpose. Yeah. I didn't know this. Nobody told me when I was in school or looking for, you know, a college or what my next step would be. It was all about getting a job. 
No one ever said, we're all here with a purpose. Find what you love to do and find a way to morph that into your life's work. Nobody said that to me. So I didn't learn. And I thought purpose was set for special people like Oprah, you mentioned, like Deepak Chopra, like Einstein, like Leonardo da Vinci, like Mother Teresa. I thought there were special people in the world who somehow got this message that they were meant for some great thing and that, you know, they, they had to, they took this on and it was a gift from God and God was there every step of the way. And they did that. The rest of us were lucky to have a good job, but it's not true. It's not true. We all need to find what we love to do because let me tell you, and I talk to people all the time and you know, this you're working 10, 20 years, and then you realize I don't even like this. And now yeah. I'm 40 yeah. and now I am 50 and now I have responsibilities. So I can't easily jump, mm-hmm. but you, you can make some changes. If you can't jump, you can start to make some changes that can lead to a jump, or at least you are inviting that passion and purpose into your life. We, too many of us put it on the back burner. When, when our kids get out of the house, when, yeah. you know, and it's, it's sad. It's sad. And I know because I too was almost 40 and I said, wow, you know, I, I could be going like this and this could be my whole life empty. Yeah. But I, I think the difference is you were listening to your inner voice. You know, you were, you were also not only listening to yourself, you were also trying new things. You were putting efforts into something. Right. And I think that's where, when we get too, too bogged down with the responsibilities with the kids, we start, stop listening to our inner voice. And, and that's, and you start making efforts because you don't have enough time because you got to take your kids. Right. Uh, so, you know, or, or just, a, you know, just a job itself. Right. So you, you are listening to yourself, you know, and you also, you are making a little bit of you know efforts outside. I think that's what led to, and a lot of people. I think that's where they get stuck. Yes, um, I start with an exercise with my clients, and it's on my website. On my so, if you go to genevievepetero.com, it it'll show you an exercise um, for ninety minutes alone, and it'll tell you you must be alone for ninety minutes. You can have a glass of wine, you can have a cup of tea if you want, pen and paper, no no computer, and start with that. And I also always offer. If somebody wants to call me or set up a time with me, I would love to just brainstorm because everybody's situation is different. Just like you said, a lot of responsibilities. Some people have more than others and some people are older than others. And some people have more of a a drive to make a change. You know, we've all been through so much during through COVID and it's really spurred a lot of people on to really look at their lives. Mm -hmm. So, so let's talk about some, you know, a lot of people watching uh, our discussion there, they are business leaders or business owners or they, they're running organizations. So, you know, you were in very, you built from scratch, very, 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 you know, good organization, you know, nonprofit, you know, and, and every time you build some, you know, something, you know, there's a lot of challenges, right? There's a lot of obstacles to get through. So what are some of the lessons that you learned that business, um, business owners, they can apply to their business as well? So if you can talk about, you know, what was the, what was the, you know, couple of tough, I know, um, moments that you have to overcome or tough challenges you have to overcome in order to uh, grow this organization, maybe, maybe some of the lessons I think uh, people can take away. Right, right. Well, first you have to overcome your own self-doubt and fear wow, because okay. any of us making a change, no matter how successful it's, it stops us. And that little, that little monster comes in and starts to, you know, crumble you a bit. Like, can you really do this? You've already been successful. You're on this track. You've got everything. Your bills are paid. You know, what are you rocking the boat for? You know, can you really do this? You don't know anything about this. Why are you taking it? All that I have learned. I've never met anybody who said, oh, I'm never worried. I, I can do it. They say, I worry, I'm afraid, but I do it anyway. Sometimes you have to do it afraid. And sometimes you have to do it afraid. So I know I had to learn that. I still have to learn that because it still creeps up in all of us, that self-doubt. And I don't know why. It doesn't matter why it's there. But we have to first look at it head on and and say, okay, but I'm going to do it anyway. Because if you Uh. try to to get rid of it, squash it, it, it doesn't. It doesn't work. You, it only works to get rid of it when you say, okay, let's do it together. I'm going to do it afraid, but I'm going to do it. Second one is to ask for help. I didn't do that for the longest time because I was embarrassed. Because I oh. thought 
I don't know anything about what I'm doing. I, I tried to rehearse how I would say to somebody and it came out, I want to give pajamas to kids. That's all I want to do. They don't have them. You don't understand. How can they go to sleep feeling good and wake up feeling good? They must be so afraid. I just want to give them pajamas. I don't care about my rent. Well, I had a mortgage. I don't care about my more. It sounded ridiculous. I didn't know how I could make money. I thought definitely there's no way to make money. Am I going to be homeless doing this? I ran up credit cards because I didn't ask for help soon enough. Thankfully, it worked. I had to ask for help because I knew I was going to get fired. I ended up just taking taking that leap and jumping and, and quitting. Um, but it was very, very difficult financially and, and, and everything. But when I started to ask for help, I was amazed at how many people came to help and said to me, you need an attorney and mm-hmm. you need a, a financial CPA. And those uh-huh. two people with their professional expertise that I did not have helped me feel supported and helped me see how this could be done, how I could get some kind of um, salary at some point, how I could be protected legally and what I needed to do because I was, I was in the dark and I was afraid, embarrassed to ask. But I tell people, you'll be amazed at how many people want to help. No matter what you're doing, they are if they're in that business, they want to share what they've learned. And you just have to say, I don't know everything. And I'm sure the person I'm going to ask doesn't know everything in the world. And I, I hope that they appreciate that I want to do this and I want to know from them. And I tell them, you will be amazed at how many people want to help if you just take a chance and ask. Uh, you mentioned wor- some of the very, very critical, you know, points. I think that's that's what, you know, uh, frees a lot of people. Self doubt is the first big one. I think that's that's where a lot of business leaders they start. You know, definitely, you know, any company you're trying to build, you never built it before. Everything you do is the first time you're doing it, right? So, definitely, those you know, um, self doubts come, you know, haunt you when when you're trying to do something, and and, and uh, definitely, it's a hard work. It's a focus, and and def, you know, maybe you have need a new skill set, but you have to get over that the self doubt. Otherwise, you know, you you're not gonna go in anywhere. Right, right. Even if you're a billionaire, you're still taking a chance because you probably are spending a lot more than the rest of us on a new venture, and yeah. there's no guarantee. No matter who you are, there's no mm-hmm. guarantee. You don't, and you can't you can't control recession. You can't control COVID. You know, no, none of us can control things as much money as we have. You have to be in the right frame of mind to say, I am taking a risk and I am going to learn and I'm going to put all the sort resources and all the people I can behind it, whether it's people like me who needed volunteers at first or billionaires who can pay people. Mm-hmm. It's no guarantee. And I don't think that they like losing millions, you know, even if they yeah. have billions and nobody likes to lose anything. Yeah. Well, just, just you know, as, as you grow, you start hiring people. Now you're putting more pressure, no doubts, because yes. now you got to take care of not only the people you're serving as a nonprofit and the kids, but now you have a people's families dependent on it because they need to work. Right. So now yes. you're taking more risk. So it, it all this stuff adds up. And then, you know, you get to the point where you need to deal, you know, uh, you head on these things. Just a different level. That's right. So how did you start finding uh, the second point you mentioned was very quick, you know, look for help. So how did you start finding these people who could help you? Uh, was it a you, you were going through process? Somebody's done it before or somebody who, who knew who wrote a books about it? You know, they were subject matter experts. How did you start finding these people who could help you? Yes, all of that. And I have to say. People who've started things from scratch, and I learned this. The universe, God, whatever you believe in, when you are on your purpose, somehow mysteriously things work out in certain ways a lot of the time. So in my book, I talk about things that popped up when I had no clue what to do. So somebody said to me, you need an attorney. You need an attorney because to make this a 501c3, which I didn't even know what it was. The way you yep. can make this legitimate because it's growing and you're, you know, you're going to need to do this, especially if you ever want to make any money ever again and pay a mortgage. So I had to learn this. So they said, do you know an attorney? I didn't know any, any attorneys that I could go to. Well, days later, I was on the corner in Manhattan and I heard a voice 
calling my name and I turned and it was an attorney that I had lost contact with a friend of a friend. And he said, Oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in so long. We need to catch up. Wow. He was an attorney. He was the right attorney. And he put me to somebody who was like perfect for me. And, you know, it, it sometimes works out that way. And when you listen to people, you, you either find that, you know, someone or someone knows someone or somehow something magical happens and gets, you know, gets to you. And it's, it's just, it's just a combination of your working towards something and the universe giving you a little boost sometimes <clears throat> to get you to the next step. So step by step, one step at a time, and just trying to breathe <laughs> through it yeah, all. Yeah, it's like a, a it's like a, you putting a lot of good energy, and you're just attracting this energy. Yes. You know, there's people, yeah. um, you know, and and they just coming in your way just to help you out to get to get to where we want to get to. And if you don't start a business, like I, I've talked to a lot of people who've never started a business, they you know they roll their eyes at me. If I'm talking to somebody who has started something from nothing or has made a major life change, they get it. They get how what you said, the energy you put out, miracles, mini miracles and big miracles come. But if you never are, if you are not that type of person, you you don't see that. You don't trust that. Yeah. You know, it, it's sometimes, you know, I'm not sure if it's because you're looking for that and that kind of happens in your life. And, and, and you know, or it's just the energy that you're putting out energy and it kind of attracts the right energy. You know, people who have the same mindset, you track them in, in your life and you just go. So I, I never put a heart, which one is it? But, you know, one of those things, but somehow it just happens. You know, it happens in a business all the time. When you're looking for a solution, it will come to you. Um, but you got to be looking for it instead of uh, just sitting back and, and just thinking about it. Right. So yeah. as long as you're putting effort, looking for a solution, it will happen for you. I agree and, 100% with you. And I think that same event you mentioned, you being on an Oprah show, it was the same thing. You know, somehow, you know, you got connected with somebody and, and uh, you, you, you had an opening there where you could go on a show. Was, was that the same scenario? Yes. But I also believe in meditation and I believe in vision boards. I'm looking at my vision board. And mm -hmm. I got married at the beginning of all this. I found a man who said I was afraid to tell him because I was I knew I was going to lose my job. And I knew I had a mortgage and I had bills and I didn't want him to think. I was going to be an equal financial partner if we, you know, move further um, along. So I told him and his first reaction was, I think you should go for it. And so that was a breath I could release because I was, you know, I wasn't sure how that would go. And he taught me meditation and he taught me vision board. I had heard about it, but I'd never made one. I put Oprah on my vision board and he helped me visualize that. And not everything comes to fruition on your vision board, but a lot does. A lot mm -hmm. does. And there, that's also part of putting out the energy and receiving it and looking at it and feeling how it would feel to have those, to do those things. And I did. And uh, wow. so so that was on your vision board, uh the going on a show and, and raising. So how long it took you and, and uh, did you put any efforts toward it or it just kind of happened automatically? What what happened? I didn't how, make, what was the process? Yeah. I didn't make any calls. They called maybe six, seven months later and okay. said people were writing in. So they were writing in about this lady giving pajamas to children in shelters. And they mm -hmm. wanted to they wanted to know more and and that's how it works. So it was completely, as they say, out of the blue. But, you know, you and I are talking now. We know it's not out of the blue. It is a, yeah. a, a miracle. I, I'll accept that sometimes. Miracles happen. But um, we, we attract things with our energy. Beautiful. Beautiful. Good stuff. So let's talk about business leaders who are either either in a business or or they're looking to start a business. You know, maybe they haven't found the purpose yet. You know, maybe they're in a business that where, where it does not call for the purpose. They don't feel connected or they maybe they're working on, you know, something is, is a, that's what the calling is. What can they what can they do to align that together? You know, uh, do, you know, do they go, you know, um, definitely I will recommend your book as well. Um, you know, def you can see your story and you can relate to it. And, and maybe that will help you um, to get through. So what can business leaders or business owners or, or somebody watching our show can do that? Simply say, listen, I, I'm in, a, in this business and, and uh, I'm, I'm halfway through, but I'm, I'm kind of feeling a little disconnected from it, you know. Um, so do I start something on a site that, that I'm really passionate about or, or do I bring that whatever I'm passionate about into this business so I can grow this company? So what are the couple of things they can, the, uh, areas they can go with? 
Yes. Um, both. Everyone's situation is different. So if you if you absolutely dread waking up going to a job or that you started a business that is just makes you miserable, clearly you need a bigger change. If there are parts of what you've built or your job that you do like, then it's a slide. You have to slide your purpose into that scenario. And I teach the slide as well as the jump, because you will find that whatever you love and that you have on that back burner that you are saying, oh, I can't do that. I can't sing. I, you know, I don't know how to teach. Um, I, I, it's too late for me to be a veterinarian. You know, I, even though I want to do that, I was never brave enough to do that. There are ways to slide anything that you're passionate about into your life. And then you can decide, maybe that's enough. Maybe that fills you that hour a day, that that afternoon a week, bringing whatever your passion is to, to work, whether you're the leader sharing it, and maybe you want to share um, something you love to do. Maybe you always wanted to play the piano, you weren't thought you weren't good enough. Then maybe you play the keyboards on Friday afternoon, and maybe yeah. you ask your team, "Hey, what's everybody? What do you love to do? What do you wish? You know, if if you didn't need money, you'd be doing. You know, would you be, would you be walking dogs? Would you be, you know, caring for the sick if you could be a doctor? And give everybody an opportunity on Friday, you know, for an hour or two to share or to teach other people in the office who want to do that." And you'd be surprised at how that is filling a hole and you don't have to uproot your entire career mm -hmm. responsibilities, but you have found that special place where that, that passion can land. And sometimes it can grow. You can see, and some of the people I work with can see how they could make a change and do it in a calmer, slower way. That would be a career change. And like I said, some people say, wow, this feels great. And I can I can live like this healthy and feel like I'm sharing and there's a light on in me now because yeah. and I've allowed my purpose to slide into my life. Well, finding your purpose is the one thing. But if you can teach your your, your teams, your staff, then also help them discover their passions. And I think that that's what, you know, it takes, you know, it goes above and beyond you. Now, now you have a team of people. They found their passions and uh, what what they really want to do, and and that gonna change the way you build a culture in, um, in in an organization. Yes, every leader needs to inspire. You know, we mm -hmm. don't need bosses anymore. It's not what we want. We don't want to be you know just talk to and feel like our our opinions don't matter. We want somebody who's going to inspire us to want to be part of the team and to rally for the leader because we believe yeah. the leader is going to rally for us and listen to us and include us. And that's different now. And, and I think that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. You've been working with the people, helping them to find their passion. Did you see, uh, uh, Jen, you know, when you were working with them, once they discover what they really want to do and they got a little passion about that effect on their product or services, whatever they were building or whatever they were, however they were serving people, did that quality of those product and services change a little bit because now the people were more committed, they were more passionate about what they're doing? Yes, the businesses grow because the more that they are happy about what they're doing, if they're selling, which we all are selling something, the the better it comes across. And the more the person that you're selling to or you want to bring into your organization feels that energy, you know, feels feels that connection with you, especially if you talk half as much and you ask more questions about that person, which you tend to do when you're happier. Mm -hmm. So that changes. And also it changes our health. It changes a lot of people who are not happy where they work. They have physical ailments, right? Anything, anything from headaches to stomach aches to just look, not feeling energetic to being tired, so many things. And it's so often a result of the moment they wake up dreading what they're going to do. And if they think about the future, it gets them down. And, you know, there are studies that show your mood will affect an ailment, a condition, and, and it doesn't make it better. It makes it worse. Yeah. So just feeling better because you are giving yourself this gift of, of this light that you're putting in your heart that's been dark because you've been afraid right. to let this thing in or didn't know how to let this in. It, it changes you physically as well.
Yeah, I think it is also fear of finding passions too, because whatever you're doing, you may have to change your ways, right? So, yeah. um, you know, sometimes, you know, that can hold people back as well. Simply said, you know, if I find really what I want to do, how about if, if I find out that the, what I'm working on is not the right thing? Now we have to I have to change my my whole game plan, what I got to do. People had a lot of time during this COVID, you know, um, a lot of people talk about, you know, that, that uh, you know, the reason we, we can't find our labor um, in Canada, especially, you know, where we are, that because people, they had a time to, you know, think it through, they, they found their passion, what they wanted to do, maybe the job they were doing were not part of it, and they found the real, what, what they want to do, and that's why, you know, they, there's a hole in, in a workforce that people quitting jobs or leaving a companies to, to work for. You think that's that's uh, also part of where you at as well, or is it just a Canadian uh, approach that you know people people find a little bit more passion uh, what they really want to do? Yeah, no, I think the world changed. We got scared. We got scared. People were dying. People mm-hmm. were dying. We, my mother got COVID in the beginning. We thought it was a death sentence. They were wearing all the alien things in the hospital. We couldn't see her. Like so many people. It became real, you know, not only seniors, not only people who are sick, people Everybody. who are mm-hmm. it, it made you look in the mirror to say, I have wasted or I have not been true to myself or I need God. If I get out of this, if we get out of this, I am going to be happier. I am going to be more loving. I am going to find something I love. It scared us. I was scared. Mm-hmm. My mom came through. Thank God. But she... Many people had a mom who didn't come through. Mm-hmm. I, we were all afraid to go out because I could have died. You could have died. Everybody. Mm-hmm. That's a scare. And a lot of times that's what changes people. You see people who have near-death experiences, right? They, they get through an accident and they change their whole, their whole mental um, outlook changes. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what fear and, and getting close to fatality can do to us yeah just thought of it that how about if i'm not around tomorrow uh, you yes. know so you want to do everything possible so if you you know about your family so how about if i'm not around my family who's going to take care of them so what i really want to do how would i spend last years of my life with the family i think those thoughts uh comes from fear but definitely um they change your perspective how you approach things yes yes i agree it does what can business leaders do to, um, you know, if, if it's possible to, you know, teach maybe kids to, you know, uh, find their own passion, you know, uh, early on in age, instead of we finding out, you know, um, in 30s and 40s and 50s, and, and they're trying to figure out, is it teachable to kids as well? So they really go after the passion instead of they're finding out later, they they, they start their life with something uh, more, more uh, what they're passionate about. Absolutely. I'm speaking May 18th to a group of seniors who are going on to college, and I'm going to talk all about don't look for a job as a job. You need to know what you love to do. You need to take some time to figure out what you love to do and what kind of a career can really embrace that. And that people have to realize is your North Star. It makes all the decisions a little easier because you will stay true to the life that you create because it fills you. And if it fills you, you are sharing, you're sharing that work, you're sharing that feeling, you're sharing that energy, you're sharing sharing that love. You don't have the resentment. You don't have the um, anger or, or, you know, even if you take it out on yourself, that's, you're emitting that toxicity of not being happy and of blaming yourself or blaming someone else for not getting an opportunity. All of that, if you stay true to yourself, is your North Star. It will make help you make all the decisions in your life, whether it's personal decisions, business decisions. Mm -hmm. And we don't, we don't realize how many ways we're making decisions by letting influences come in. You know, you'll make more money at this job. You know, you need more money, might not have much time with the family. It's taking you off course, but look, you need money. All these different, my my spouse doesn't want me to do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So many decisions are influenced by negative fears we have but if you stick true to your north star it takes discipline but the the earlier you learn it and the earlier you're supported in that the stronger you will be when you are faced with decisions every time yeah schools got to do a little bit better job at, at, at this i guess right if they can uh, prepare kids and and help them discover that you know then you have a, a much better grounded you know people coming to your workforce definitely it makes 
you know, sense for businesses, makes sense for organizations, whatever you do. But, you know, it starts from school. So they got to do a little bit better uh, in this area to let the kids discover what they really want to do. Yes, absolutely. We, we have to, I don't know why people, at least when I was growing up, I think people would have laughed if, you know, that if I, I would say something like, you know, but I really love to do this. This is what I want to make out of a career. You know, even yeah. now when you hear people say a crazy dream people say that's a crazy dream you know get a job as you know good you're good in math Just yeah. find it. it's like oh don't squash their dream they can find something to make money and be happy and probably make a lot of money if you love what you do yeah well my daughter i was uh, talking to her you know she she's uh, she's 15 and uh, she draws a lot right she she's very good at drawing and she he was telling you know I want to be digital you know character created for for uh, you know uh, for digital media I mean you know do you, is that what you want to do it's, yeah that's what I want to do and and she's very strong about that I think uh, that's what she's going to pursue but she loves drawing and she wants to draw in a digital world instead of drawing on a piece of paper so you know these kids are very good at finding what they really want to do but you know you just have to be supportive of that and and simply say listen you know um do what you really want to do you know last thing you want to do is put put her on something else that she's not going to enjoy in the longer run and then again she's going to figure out by herself that this is not what i wanted to do right and people can realize your daughter is smart enough to realize and you are trusting her she knows she likes to draw and she knows where she can go with a, a job that's not just drawing on paper so if you are raising a child that loves to draw you need to seek out other people who can say Oh, okay. So she likes to draw. You know that there are jobs here and she can do the digital thing because a lot of people wouldn't see make that step. Like your daughter made that step to see where she could get a, a good career out of it. And you were yeah. smart and supportive to say, I see that direction. She's not just saying she wants to sit around and draw and who's going to pay me to draw. Yeah. So we have to and we have to know that there are people out there who can help direct our kids or ourselves. If we say, you know, I want to be a veterinarian, I'm 50 years old, it's too late. Well, there are lots of ways to bring some of that into your life. You know, mm-hmm. if, if it's not possible to get a degree at this stage, it is, but some people it's not um, you know, practical. But that doesn't mean you have to close the door on the whole business of working with animals to keep them safe and healthy. Yeah. Well, technology and all this information out there these days makes so so easy for us, right? No matter what area you want to go into any point in life, point in life that you can easily make, make a make a you know make a change in your life um it's not that difficult it used to be that you know it's you have to go to school and figure out now there's so much knowledge so much information out there you can make the change anytime and you can find people everywhere now exactly you know, in facebook you can put out there hey i want to be a veterinarian don't know the first thing <laughs> to switch from being a cpa who can help me yeah, yeah good stuff so how can people be any service to you? How could people help you with the both and you know, your speaking site and also a pajama site? You know, people are listening or watching. How could there be any help to you? Oh, thank you. Um, well, if they're interested in pajama program, it's pajamaprogram.org. Or okay. they can go to my website, genevievepeturo.com. I can either introduce you to someone at pajama program, depending on what you need to know. And to help me, if you know who is looking for speakers, I would love to speak about leadership and purpose in the human connection and how sharing what you love to do will get you where you want to go. And I, I'd love that. And certainly they can check out my book. And if it, you know, if it appeals to them, then I'd love to hear if they read it, what they think. Yeah, I'm going to include links to all of that uh, below this video as well. So they can click a link and they can, uh, you know, um, get access to you. Definitely. Um, you know, I learn a lot from our discussion, especially from your book. There's so many stories about your mom and, and you know, personal stories in a book. But, you know, it's, it's a message. There's a great message in every story that you, you, you know, you outline in a book. Um, people who are watching it definitely, you know, and, and where I'm from, um, you know, um, in, in my world, uh, Jen, is, is a service is always superior to everything else you do in a life. You know, service to other humans, right? Service to somebody help out. And, and you doing a great service. You know, you you uh help of so many kids build this organization definitely you know these these people are helping out kids on a daily basis i think this is a great service that you provided in you know from 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 uh, you know your journey and help out tons of people people who are watching i definitely encourage to get a copy of your book and and uh, you know be a part of this program help out kids um if they can you know definitely go out and connect with the pajama program and help as many kids you can thank you thank you so much and thank you for this conversation i loved it any message you want to leave for audience before we go Um, You know, it's not the power of one that changes things. It's the power of one another that moves mountains and moves people. 
Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, I want to acknowledge your time. Thank you so much for sharing this time with me. Um, I learned a lot. I'm sure people who are watching, they're going to get tons of value. I'll encourage them to get a copy of your book again and reach out to you for discussion. You know, same as, you know, as I learned, I'm sure they're going to learn a lot from you as well. Thank you. I hope so. All right. Thank you.